On this episode, we're going to talk about saints, and I even got a free giveaway, so stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss it. What's up everybody? This is Josh from Practical Theism. You know, I'm really excited about today's video because it's on one of the most interesting and in some cases controversial aspects of all of Christendom. You know, I was actually recently connected with Luke Vercoloni, and Luke, I, I pray I'm saying your last name right, of Beast Ministries. You know, Luke's super dope. He's a professional soccer player and, uh, you know, he's just such a genuine and down-to-earth dude. I'll have to go out and see him play when uh, when he's in town because, you know, soccer really hits home with me. Um, I grew up playing it. It's been my sport forever. So anyways, I'm rocking some of his Beast gear right here. So it's pretty dope. Got a really cool logo and everything. Now, Beast stands for Be a Saint. I love it. I love it. I love it so much because I actually made a hip hop song about it seven years ago in anticipation for this moment. I don't know why, but I, it just really, really applies here right now. So, and, and guess what? Here's the best part. I have a shirt right here for you, for you all, one of you actually, and I want you to get this. So all you have to do in order to get this, and it's a large by the way, so, so for some of you ladies, it might be a little bit a little bit uh, like a pajama shirt or something. So all you have to do is I want you to go down in the comments below, say hi, let me know the practical theism video that's your favorite that made you subscribe, share this video on Facebook, and get people over to like your comment on the YouTube video. And at the end of the week, the comment with the most likes is gonna get the shirt. Super dope, awesome, first giveaway, super amped for it. So anyways, here we go. Up and down the ages of Christian history, we see the name Saint thrown around regarding a lot of different people. Now the church celebrates what we call feast days throughout the year. And uh, for those who don't say Christians don't like to party, they love to party. And they are for the different recognized saints. Now we see the idea of saint riddled throughout the scriptures as well. Naturally, this begs the question, what is a saint? What does it mean to become a saint? Should we strive to become saints as believers? You know, Mother Angelica once said, quote, Saints are ordinary people who do what they do for the love of Jesus. They say what they must say without fear. They love their neighbor even when they are cursed by him and live without regret over yesterday or fear of tomorrow, end quote. <laughs> I love that. Saint, actually, let's talk about the word a little bit. Saint's a Middle English word that comes from the old French saint. S-E-I-N-T, which stemmed from the Latin term sanctus, which means holy, which stemmed really from the past participle of sanctire, which means consecrate. In simple essence, I think that the Latin term gets at the definition most succinctly. Holy. Holy is often used to describe someone or something that is dedicated or consecrated to God or for a religious purpose. You know, another definition is morally and spiritually excellent. Scripture talks about the saints as the holy ones. Now, the term hagion is used in the Greek, which is actually a variation of hagios, which means holy or sacred, set apart in the Greek. Saint and holy are interchangeable in the biblical language. But why would that be how St. Paul and the other spiritual fathers of our faith talked about believers and followers of Christ. Because as believers, we are called to be set apart from the world. Now this world has its own economy, if you will, a way of thinking, a way of life. But you see, the divine life is not the worldly life. The divine life flips the logic of humanity on its head. And so to live that way is really setting yourself apart from the ways of this world. It is to set yourself apart for a divine purpose. You see, as believers, we are not just saved from sin. We aren't just called to be away from sin. We are saved and called for a purpose. We were saved for sonship. And being sons and daughters of the Most High, who is the principle of our existence, the eternal good, we are called to holiness. 
We are called to be a people set apart from that bondage that the ways of the world enslave us in. We move from slaves of self-love to slaves of pure love, which is entirely others focused. And when someone by the grace of God, because trust me, that's the only way one could even begin to live this way, allows God's grace to flood our entire being, living a life of heroic charity. We recognize that in the Christian faith as something to aspire to. In one sense, all believers are saints because of what our calling is. But also, the saints in our Christian tradition are those who have exemplified heroic charity, conforming their lives to the will of God in radical ways. I mean, they're the Christian celebrities, if you will. And the best part is that they are sons and daughters of the Most High, even after they pass on into the next life. You see, Christ is the connection point between humanity and divinity. He is the homoousios, the same substance as God the Father. And He bridges and connects the gap between the spiritual and the material. And through Christ, the saints are surrounding us in their heavenly glory, really rooting us on. Hebrews talks about this, quote, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of the faith." End quote. So why be a saint? <laughs> because that's it. That's the thing. That's, it's, it's the end, the summum of the Christian life complete transformation and sanctification of our soul. To be holy, why be a saint? Because in the words of St. Catherine of Siena, quote, if you are what you should be, you will set the whole world ablaze, end quote. So don't forget, comment below with a hi, let me know what your favorite practical theism video is and which one actually made you subscribe. Share the video on Facebook, get people back over to YouTube and have them like your post. And at the end of the week, the one with the most likes, I will definitely ship this shirt out, get your comment and get your, uh, your information on this. So that's the person that's gonna win. If you like what you're seeing here, definitely hit that subscribe button so you can get more of this awesome content. And from all of us here at Practical Theism, we'll catch you next time.